in your lab pack video, make sure you put the information uh, that you need on here, your name, emergency contact numbers, and put this in a conspicuous place in the event that somebody needs to contact uh, emergency medical people. Not that I expect it's going to happen, but it's good lab safety procedure to have this information handy. Um, if you haven't already, you can print the experiment procedure from the lab pack CD. And in fact, you can print everything like I did. I printed everything and I took it down to the local print shop and I had it bound. So I actually uh, printed it myself and then I had it bound. So I have basically a paper lab manual. You don't have to, um, but if you would like to for ease of of just managing your instructions while you're doing your procedure, go ahead and print your lab procedures and um, have them handy. I'd like to call your attention first to page 16. And if you notice on page 16, what it will tell you is the materials that you need for to have handy for the exercise. Uh, the top box says what the student will provide. Um, some distilled water. I've got my distilled water right here and I just put in a little plastic bottle um, so that it was handy. Um, you need a couple of sheets of paper, just notebook paper or printer paper is okay. A couple of paper towels to have handy, so I've got my paper towels right here, and a pair of scissors. Everything else is already contained in your lab pack, and so you should have handy your, uh, well let me go down the list. If you opened, oh my, <laughs> if you opened your pen scale, Inside there are a couple little plastic bags, little empty plastic bags. Don't get rid of those. We're going to use them for as part of today's procedure. Um, you also need your graduated cylinder, which is the measuring cup that we use in the lab. This thing right here. Um, your safety goggles, of course. Uh, your spring scale. And I have mine over here. Here's my spring scale. I put a piece of string on it and then I hung it to one of my kitchen cabinet knobs just because it's easier to use. So you need your spring scale. Um, the spatula is this little glass thing. It's almost got like a little spoon on the end. That's the spatula. Of course your glass test tubes that you'll put in the test tube rack. The magnifier, this little guy right here. Um, the rubber stopper, which is this thing. Your kit included a glass marking pencil, and it's unsharpened, so you'll need to sharpen it. I just, I prefer to use a Sharpie, but you can use a glass marking pencil or a Sharpie, it doesn't matter. And of course, for cleanup later, uh, the test tube brush, this little thing right here. So let me show you where you can find the stuff for today's exercise. In your lab pack, there was something that looked like this, and there's lots of little pieces inside of it. Your stuff for today's lab pack is mostly packed inside of here. So if you can't find your lab pack stuff, and you should be able to if you checked in your materials with the list, um, there's a lot of individual items in this thing. What you'll find is a little plastic baggie. <laughs> Looks like this, and it says right under the scientific method. Um, inside the plastic baggie, you're going to find six little vials that look just like this, and they'll each be labeled one through six. What I did was I took that big piece of gray foam that was packed on top of your lab pack and I cut it in this little kind of a rectangle shape and then using my scissors I cut down into it just a little bit and I made like a little hole. I actually made six holes and then I stuffed into those six little holes my six little vials because I like to keep them standing up so I can see what's going on and I even wrote on the top of them with my sharpie numbers one, two, three, four, five, and number six. So you don't have to do this, this is just something I did for me. Once you're ready to get started, you can use your lab manual, the uh, lab report at the back, or you can print the one that I posted online. Um, the one that I posted online, it's trying to help you by telling you what page, what step, what you're going to complete first in every table. But I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how to complete the procedure and complete the table at the same time. Page 19 of your lab manual. Um, once you have your unknowns right here ready to go in front of you, I've got mine in my little homemade vial holder here. What your instructions tell you to do is to take sample number one and you're going to record first the color of it. So they're asking you to look at the tube, note what color 
is the substance that's in the vial and this is not a trick question it's kind of a dark brown color so on data table number one right here where I've highlighted for you in the yellow box this is the first box you will complete in table one I want you to record the color of unknown number one and so you'll just simply put dark brown or whatever color you want to use to describe that vial um, you'll do the same thing for the remaining six or the remaining five unknowns what is the color of sample two, three, four, five, and six? The next thing that's in your procedures is they want you to determine what is the volume of stuff that's in the vial. To determine the volume, you need to peel away the label. Don't peel it off, just peel it away carefully. And once you peel it away, you're going to expose some numbers, some measurements on the side of the vial. Uh, tap your substance real gently on a hard surface so that you can pack whatever's inside of there. Just kind of pack it down like that. And once it's sufficiently packed to your satisfaction, then read and estimate as best you can how much stuff is inside of your little vial. Record that information on data table number two the second data table and again if you're using my chart that I put um, online um, there'll be a yellow box and that tells you this is where you put the information for data table number two and so you'll do the same procedure for the remaining five unknowns figuring out how much stuff is in each one of the little vials The next step of the procedure is to determine how much mass is inside of the little vial. Uh, and to determine that, we're going to do it indirectly. You need your spring scale. Uh, I have taken my spring scale and I have just uh, tied a little piece of string around it and then I looped it around a cabinet knob here so that I can have two free hands to work with. But your instructions tell you to take one of the clear plastic bags that was packed with your scale and put your vial in that plastic bag and then attach it to the clip and read your scale reading down so low numbers on top high numbers on the bottom and to determine how much this how much mass is in here you simply read the bottom of the indicator there's a little line a little black line on the indicator and that tells you um, where on the scale it's reading and that tells you the measurement of this which is the vial the contents in the plastic bag once you've determined that number then your instructions tell you to detach take the stuff out of the plastic bag and reweigh the empty bag just by itself you'll record the information of the bag with the vial, in the bag without the vial, and data table two. You'll repeat all of this for all six vials. Once you have completed this procedure, skip over to page number 25, step 10. The reason you're going to skip that far is because the remaining instructions have to do with the digital scale, which we're not using for this particular exercise. The next series of steps asks you to take a piece of paper, one of your clean sheets, and you're going to make several paper boats. Paper boats are not difficult to make. You just take your piece of paper, fold it in half one time, fold it in half again, and then using your scissors you can just cut right along the seams so that you have four pieces of paper all this size. Once you have your four pieces of paper, uh, fold them in half in the same direction so that now you have something that's kind of like a, a little, well they call it a little paper boat so that you can put stuff on there and it doesn't slide off. Once you've made your paper boats then take your unknown number one, go ahead and open the vial and pour the contents into the middle of the little paper boat. There I've got all my stuff right there on the paper boat and then using your little magnifying glass go ahead and examine closely 
the texture of this, the unknown sample. Record your observations on data table number one under the texture column. Also notice the shape. Do you have something that's crystalline, like salt crystals or sugar crystals? Do you have something that's granular, like dirt or soil might look? Also notice if you have if your sample has a smell to it. Now it's bad lab practice to actually to put something up to your nose and, and take a big whiff. Instead, the proper way to smell something, and I promise I'm not making this up, is to take your sample and to waft. In other words, you take your hand and you kind of just move air current over the sample so that you can see if there's an odor, but you're not directly inhaling whatever vapors might be coming off the sample. Solubility is a description of how much something will or will not dissolve into a solvent. It can also be used to help to identify what something is or is not. So in the case of our experiment today, uh, the way we're going to determine solubility is to see if our unknowns will simply dissolve in water. So I've got my bottle of distilled water here. I actually purchased a gallon of distilled water and then I just put it in this little plastic bottle because it was easier to handle. But you're going to measure out into your graduated cylinder, five milliliters of distilled water. And so I've measured out five mils already. Your instructions tell you to use your spatula, this is like a spoon in the lab, use your spatula and pick up a little bit of your sample, transfer it into a test tube so that you know what's inside the test tube using your pencil that is included in the kit or in your sharpie, go ahead and write on there sample number one. I just put a little pink number one on my test tube. Then add carefully, oh, <laughs> that wasn't carefully, <laughs> but add carefully your five mils of water. And you can gently shake your test tube like this or you can put your stopper on it and shake it up like this to see if the substance is soluble. If the substance dissolves away in the water, then like this is sample number one, all of mine dissolved away, then go ahead and record on your sheets that the substance is soluble. If you have stuff in there that won't dissolve away, then your substance is insoluble. Once you've completed all of the procedure, your first two pages of your lab report should be complete. The last column on data table number one asks you to make a conclusion. In other words, as best you can, and from your prior knowledge, which you already know, and considering page 16, the table in the lab manual, or page 19 um, in the lab manual, what do you think unknown substance number one is? Do you think it's flour? Do you think it's sugar? Do you think it's soil? Do you think it's nutmeg? Do you think it's cinnamon? What is your best guess as to what each substance is? After you have finished your procedure, here's what you need to upload into the Dropbox on Blackboard. Uh, make sure you, that you upload your complete lab report. Oh, your complete lab report. The first two pages are going to be your measurements, but the third page is a series of questions that you need to answer. Don't forget to do the third page before you upload it into the Dropbox. The other thing that you need to upload is some sort of evidence that you actually completed the procedure. So that could be a series of photos. I believe I'm requesting 10 minimum, a maximum of 15. Or it can be a series of video clips, um, no more than 15 minutes, but at least 10 minutes. Um, more specifics can be found in the Week 2 folder on Blackboard under Lab Resources. And last, thanks for completing exercise number two. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope this video was helpful. All of your waste can go into the trash, and even though I did not do anything with my goggles because of the glare as I was doing the video, make sure that you wear your safety goggles when you're doing the procedure.